Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be discussing with you on grief and nursing management. I'm Rima Stanley, tutor at Triple M College of Nursing. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to define grief, list the physiologic and psychologic responses to grief, and list the factors affecting grief, explain Kubler-Rose five stages of grief, explain John Bowles and Perkis stages of grief, and also discuss the nursing intervention for patient with grief. Now let us see what is grief. Grief, it, it is a reaction of a person to a loss and this loss could be something or someone a significant or important part of their life. It can take in the form of shock, disbelief, anger, resentment or depression. So in short, grief it's a natural process to losing some, someone or something that's important to you. And a variety of emotions are felt like sadness or loneliness. And this emotions or experience arises from a number of different reasons. Maybe uh, when a loved one died or a relationship is ended or you lost your job and other life changes such as chronic illness or a move to a new home, uh, all this can lead to grief. So remember, everyone grieves differently. So here is the other definition of grief, where grief is an emotional process of coping with a loss, which means a series of emotional changes takes place in a person in responding to a loss to come to an acceptance stage. Here is the other term which is often used interchangeably. So, uh, the first one is bereavement, which means or refers to a state of loss, while grief is the reaction to that loss. Example of uh, bereavement, that is death of a child, spouse, sibling, or parent. While mourning is a feeling or a period of sadness after a loss. Although grief responses is focused on the emotional response to loss, grief also has physical, cognitive, behavioral, social, cultural, spiritual, and ph philosophical dimensions. Now let us see uh, the physiologic and psychologic responses to grief. The physiologic responses can take in the form of crying, shortness of breath, or difficulty in breathing, palpitations, extreme tiredness, which is otherwise called as fatigue, uh, difficulty in sleeping, which is termed as insomnia, and inability to eat due to loss of appetite, sometimes choking and GI disturbances. While the psychologic responses include feeling of loneliness and sadness, anxiety and panic, difficulty in concentrating and disorientation, anger and ambivalence. Now let us see what are the factors affecting grief. So the following factors may affect the nature, intensity and duration of grief, such as significance of a person, that is the relationship a grieving person had with the person who died. The nature of death, that is the cause of death, for example, the grieving uh, process may differ depending on whether the person died suddenly or was ill for a long time the grieving person's age and gender, the grieving person's personality and coping ability, and also the support system available for the grieving person, such as from friends and family, the grieving person's customs, religion, or spiritual beliefs also influences the grieving process. Now let us see grief process according to Kubler-Ross. So in 1969, psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Rose, having done extensive research with terminally ill patients, identified five stages of feelings and behavior that individuals experience in response to a real, perceived, or anticipated loss. So here are the five stages of grief. The first stage is denial. This occurs when a person first learns of a loss, it's a normal to think 
this is not happening. The person is often in a state of shock and disbelief. Denial is a protective mechanism that allows the individual to cope within an immediate time. Or you may say, some of the responses now h2 that is anger as reality sets in the person is faced with the pain of their loss he or she may feel frustrated and helpless thus feelings later turn into anger Anger may be directed at self or displaced on loved ones, caregivers, and even God. In this stage, there may be preoccupation with an idealized image of the lost entity. Some of the responses include, why me? It is not fair. How can this happen to me? Who is to be, to be blamed? Third stage, that is bargaining, during this stage, the person dwells on what they could have done to prevent the loss. This stage is generally not visible or evident to others. A bargaining is made with God in an attempt to reverse or postpone the loss. Responses include, if God will help me through this, I promise I will go to church every Sunday and volunteer my time to help others or I, I do anything to turn back time. Next, let's see stage four, that is depression. During this stage, the full impact of loss is experienced. Sadness sets in as the person begins to understand the loss and its effect on their life. Signs of depressions include crying, sleep issues, and decreased appetite. They may also feel overwhelmed, regretful, and lonely. Responses include, I'm so sad. What's the point? I miss the way life was before. Stage five, acceptance. In this final stage of grief, the person accepts the reality of their loss that it cannot be changed. Focus is on the reality of the loss and its meaning for the individual affected by it. At this stage, the person may still feel sad, but they are able to start moving forward with this, with their life. The responses include, it's going to be okay. I can take control and manage this. So remember that every person goes through these phases in their own way. All individuals do not experience each of these stages in response to a loss nor do they experience them in this order. Some may go back and forth between them or skip one or more stages altogether. And sometimes reminders of laws such as dead anniversary or a familiar song can trigger the return of grief. Now let us see John Bowles and Perkis stages of grief. They have hypothesized four stages in the grief process. They imply that this behavior can be observed in all individuals who have experienced the loss of something or someone of value, even in infants as young as six months of age. The stages include shock and numbness. This is the initial phase immediately following the loss of a loved one. The shock and numbness are attributed to not being ready to accept the reality of loss. According to Parkes and Bowling, this phase is self-defense mechanism that allows a person to cope immediately after learning about a loss. The second phase that is yearning and searching. In this phase, a person experiences all type of emotions from anxiety to anger, despair, confusion, sorrow, and much more. The bereaved begin to yearn for the return of their loved one, as well as search for meaning in their loss. The third stage, disorganization, 
and despair. In this phase, the person starts to accept the reality of their loss. They may also feel the need to withdraw from their everyday life or from activities and hobbies they once enjoyed. They begin to understand that their old reality will never be the same. And this leads to feeling of despair or hopelessness. And the fourth stage is reorganization and recovery. At this phase, the person begins to understand that their all life is forever changed, but they also begins to accept the new normal. It is a slow process, but the person begins to understand the positive aspects of their life after loss, begins to have increased energy and positive emotions, such as positive memories about their relationship with their loved one. Now, let us see the nursing intervention for patient with grief. As a nurse, it is important to provide an open accepting environment and also encouraging the patient to ventilate their feelings, especially their feelings towards the loved ones and also to listen actively. Provide various diversional activities whenever necessary. And according to the situation, it is also important to teach the patient about the common symptoms of grief so that this will help the patient to identify and seek help. Reinforce the patient with goal-oriented activities, that is engaging the patient in goal-oriented activities. Teach the patient to get support group, that is by bringing together similar grieved person to encourage communication, share experiences of the loss and to offer companionship, both social and emotional support. Help the patient also to identify ambivalent feelings of guilt or anger towards loss of object. According to the situation, also assist the individual in developing positive methods of coping with loss. Provide positive feedback for use of effective coping strategies whenever necessary. Also encourage the patient to utilize family, religious or cultural supports that provide a meaning for the patient and encourage the patient to participate in group activities. This also helps the patient to gain support at the same time to divert her thoughts about the lost object. Key points. Grief is a normal process of coping with loss. However, grieving can also be maladaptive, especially when it takes in the form of Prolonged response, that means when the person grieves for many years after the loss has occurred, or if it is delayed response, which is otherwise called as inhibited response, where the person is fixed in the denial stage for many years until the grief response is triggered by a reminder of the loss, or it can be distorted response, where the person is fixed in the anger stage of grieving, and the individual turns the anger inward on the self or is unable to function in the normal activities of daily life. With this, we have come to the end of this topic. Reference our Srivani. You may also refer online websites such as healthline.com, psychom.net. Thank you.